I'm probably gonna want a rocket and a mortar. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Hello everyone, it is Dan Black Gaming here, and today we are going to be doing another Clash Royale YouTube video, but also we're going to be doing the Royal Giant Challenge. Could it be the most annoying challenge ever? Who knows? I mean, the Royal Giant is probably one of the most annoying cards in the entire game, so we're going to find out right now how well I can do. So you can see we win a ton of cards. At 2 wins, you win 50. At 4 wins, you win 100. And at 6 wins, you win 150. And the gold is 625 cards so not that great and let's join that for 10 gems and we're going to build a deck together and do the entire challenge hopefully winning all six i mean who uses the royal giant anyway um let's see i know minions go well minions are good um i'm probably gonna want a rocket and a mortar just kidding that would be the scummiest deck um but let's see so and maybe the expo just to throw that in there um no i'm just kidding about that so the uh electro wizard is also good all around since everyone has a royal giant I'm going to want an Inferno Tower, um, because obviously it's the best counter to the Royal Giant. I'm going to want a Zap, because that is a counter to the Inferno Tower. I'm going to want some more ground support. So everyone's going to have a Skarmy, but I think a Knight might be a better value. Um, and then I'm going to want some more stuff to back up. So I'm going to use a Musketeer overall, pretty good. Um, and Bats are also pretty strong, so I will use bats i think so yeah, let's see how that deck works 3.6 cycle deck um i'll take a screenshot just in case it's good and we can change it later if it doesn't work so let's hit right into a battle so hopefully we face somebody um who doesn't have the best counters to the royal giant so maybe they're not thinking about that but the main tips in this video are going to help you because if everyone has to have a royal giant just bring cards that counter the royal giant so obviously the inferno tower that's all you're going to need and you should be good to go so this guy has some sort of minor royal giant deck that is like the og of og decks i remember you put the miner down first to absorb that tower and then you go with the rg to do that backup damage uh you don't want to let a miner go does pretty good damage um and you also don't want to let minions go i'm a little bit confused about what this guy is doing maybe he's saving for the oh he's a mini pekka um i should have brought a mini pekka actually that is a very good defensive card against the royal giant but it does get off some decent damage and luckily my musketeer is able to take it out um, he also has an Executioner, fairly annoying, but nothing to worry about. Um, the Knight should distract, and these Bats should be able to finish it off just fine without dying, or at least without all of them dying. And he does Zap, but that is not going to do anything. And perfect that he did Zap, because now I have the availability to use my Inferno Tower when he uses his Royal Giant, which means he will be able to get countered instantly. Um, there's his Royal Giant, and keep in mind, all these are tournament standard. It does not matter what level cards you have, they're all going to be leveled up evenly so it's fair for everybody um we're gonna go with an ewiz defensive placement on this side and a musketeer offensive placement on that side and that should be good enough and i got the zap ready i guess he doesn't have a counter yet um so we're gonna go inferno tower right now boom just to get the rg's attention he goes to back up uh his miner with a mini pekka and luckily it all goes down and he so far has no damage on that entire left side from that entire push he used a bandit he used a Royal Giant, and I think he had one other card that he threw in there. So pretty darn good. The only damage he has is on this tower I'm circling with the Knight from the Miner. Um, so I know he has a Zap in rotation, but we should be perfectly fine. Uh, we're heading into Double Elixir, so hopefully we can ship him down. I did not bring any Fireballs, which could be an issue if he has a Three Musketeers deck and pops that out um, within the Double Elixir time. But I think we should be pretty good for now. Um, there goes the Tombstone, a little bit early on the placement. Uh, we're going to go with some minions to clean up the rest of that. His mini P.E.K.K.A. has been deployed, um, but we are still getting some decent ship damage, and I'm expecting an RG to come in pretty soon um, just because he's a fairly good push. There it is. We're going to stick in front this time to throw him off. Um, that's going to change it up a little bit, and this time I know he has a zap, so I'm going to go bats. Ooh, that poison was not the best, and the bats were not needed, but still, doesn't matter. It's equal trade. I mean, the Inferno Tower is five, um, and the bats are one. Uh, wait, are the bats one? I, I just don't remember. I hope they are one, or else that would be a very bad mistake. Um, if saying so, they are one. Uh, I've literally never used them. That's why I have no clue. Um, then it would be equal, because RG is six, and the Inferno Tower is five, uh, so plus one would be six, and six equal trade. So now we're trying to finish off the this guy only 758 health left oh they're two so i did lose some elixir um you know that's perfectly fine we should easily be able to ship him down towards that double elixir timing 
Uh, we're going to go Inferno Tower right at the last moment there. I don't have to worry about a Zap because uh, he's just going to, I guess, poison us. Um, and he doesn't have an Inferno Tower. Very surprising. I would expect everyone in this challenge to have a Bomb Tower or Inferno Tower. And he actually goes on to defend that side. We're going to go Zap this Mini P.E.K.K.A. Um, so the RG can get off the few more shots that it needs. And now we're only going to need one more little push and we'll easily be able to take him out. So I'm going to start it off with the Musketeer. And now we have this Inferno Tower. This has been the MVP of this game. Everybody should have an Inferno Tower in their deck if they're playing this challenge. Once again, he goes to the Poison. I'm going to go Bats just in case he brings out a Zap. Um, and once I get this RG down, that will be good game. So I'll say thumbs up and good luck to you. We're going to go just Zap the Tower for some extra damage. And boom, there we go. Finish it off for the first win of the episode. Um, I mean, hopefully we can keep that going throughout the rest of it. Um, it doesn't seem like it's too hard in the beginning, but you never know uh, getting into the harder and harder challenges. Uh, so 1 and 0, oh, maybe maybe we can go 6 and 0, oh, who knows, that would be the best to do, but it does not matter if you lose 2 and win 6, as long as you get the 6 wins, it doesn't matter how you do it. Um, so we're going against a guy from the clan, Battle 5, we're going to start off with a slow musketeer in the back in the defensive position. Uh, quick tip, most people deploy their troops on the right side because they are right handed, um, and they use their right finger, so it's closer to the screen, so just deploy your troops on the left side for defensive, um, and the right side for attacking if you do not know which side they're going for. Um, we're going to go zap this. It could be a zap bait deck, but who knows? Um, might as well get some extra damage. And there comes the RG. So we're going to wait for it as long as possible. And boom, there it goes. Um, I also recommend that you guys have a lightning spell with you because it would come in handy to take out the Inferno Tower. So you have to know that that's coming. Lightning spells are going to be hot. Inferno Towers are going to be hot. Um, and obviously RGs bring you, so those are going to be the really, really good cards. Um, he does let a knight get to the tower. That's kind of like letting a, a, a little bit of a less overpowered lumberjack get there. I mean, you saw it did around 1,000 damage um, as it was left alone. And since the Royal Giant got uh, nerfed around two months ago with the deploy time from one second to two seconds, I play, like to play it in the back to build up the largest push possible uh, because it's easy to react. I mean, two seconds is pretty much dropping it anywhere. You have plenty of time to save up that elixir for the Inferno Tower, and at this point, it's not even a surprise card. It's more of a uh, golem, you could call it, I guess. Um... I'm trying to see what he's doing. Uh, it looks like he must have quit fairly early. That Musketeer is having some trouble, but I think we have the first quitter of this video. And just watch that left side with those bats and the knight. That is a very strong push. Um, I might have to implement that into one of my own decks. And just for the fun of it, let's get a second RG down just right next to it, uh, just to show him. And boom, that's going to be a great screenshot. We got the two RGs going at that tower, and we take him out. Boom. Um, I, I can't believe I'm using the Royal Giant to win. I mean, that is horrible. Um, but, you know, it's okay. You have to use it, so I might as well. Um, we're going to get the first reward of the Royal Giants, 50 cards. I will take those any day, and as you, as you can tell, I never use them. They're not past level 10. I did use them when they were overpowered, but you have to admit, you've tried the Royal Giant once in a ladder play. Now, don't lie to me. Tell me in the comments down below if you've ever used the Royal Giant to get wins, and it better be yes. Um, I'm, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's yes. Um, we're going to go Knight in the back corner in an offensive spot, and watch. See, they always drop the cards on the left side. Of your left side, they're right. Uh, we're going to go take those out with the Ewis, so just place cards on the left side for defensive if you do not know what they're going to place. Um, hopefully that can take it out. Premature Cannon is not going to be too good for him because I can take that out with the Bats just fine. Um, that was kind of unnecessary actually, but they should absorb some shots from those Fire Spirits. And as long as you absorb one, that's going to be enough because the tower can take out one Fire Spirit at a time. Um, okay, so we're going to go Inferno Tower right about now. Boom. And now we're going to go with Minions, and that was a very good minor placement. So we're going to have some trouble with that. Um, at least we have some good backup support with those Minions. We should easily be able to take it out um, fairly quickly. And he did spend a ton on that push. So I wish I could get my RG down, but barely um, not enough. Uh, so sadly, I'll have to stick with a very, very low health Musketeer, which still should get a shot onto the tower. Nice. And we are going to go let those Fire Spirits... Um, Onto the tower since that tower it has plenty of health left. We're going to use a knight here to absorb those fire spirits, um, or just one of them, because each time they get to your tower, it, they do extreme damage. So you might as well uh, use a knight, which is a pro uh, is profit, um, and it's still you know pretty good for defense. So I would actually recommend a lightning spell because here it'd be beautiful. I could get the furnace, the tower, and the night witch, and we'd be cooking. Um, so there goes that fireball, and the RG does get off two nice shots, and that musketeer is going to do some good defensive work. Um, we are going to go uh, good value zap here plus e to take all that out. 
Um, now we're going to get ready with the bats of our own, which should be able to counter the Night Witch and her bats. So now it's actually getting to a pretty close battle. Um, the only thing I have to worry about is this RG coming in pretty quickly, and that is why I'm saving my Inferno Tower. Um, if you don't have that, it's going to get instant damage to your tower, and you can't do anything about it. They're going to chip you out since it's a three-minute battle, um, so you have to have a troop, I mean, or tower, I guess, uh, that will lure the attention of the Royal Giant. Um, I'm going to watch out for the miner. I'm going to place it here this time just to change it up a little bit. Um, get ready. Watch. Ready? It's going to be right about now. We're going to go zap on everything, and that should be able to take it out. He's going to go... Oh, come on. That's not good. Um, he does zap, but we do have a knight on the tower. Um, I should say on the uh, royal giant, and we, do, we are able to protect it, but I do not see us winning this battle. Um, his deck is good. We might have to copy it, actually. Um, I, it seems like he might be an experienced RG user, you never know, uh, that it would not be the best case scenario, um, but sometimes it is the truth. Uh, so we're going to go zap that down, and this time he's not going to get any damage, which is perfect, exactly what we need. Um, and we're going to have to build up a push of our own extremely quickly. We're going to have to get this RG down right now. Um, hopefully he's not going to minor us, which he does, so we're going to go stick some bats right on top of that. Um, the Musketeer does go down fairly quickly, so now we're going to go have to stick a Musketeer of our own in the corner for some support. Um, now we're just going to start layering on troops. Maybe we can pull off something um, extraordinary here. I don't see us doing that. Um, this is probably going to be our first loss, uh, sadly, of the day. Um, yes, it is within fireball range. I know it can take that out. So that is going to be a good game to you. And I think we should copy his deck because it was really, really strong. Um, the only thing I would change, I think, were the archers. He didn't, they weren't uh, really use that often so we're gonna go here we're gonna go into our battle log and we're gonna go here so if you didn't know about that you can click on this guy um, and I wish you could copy the deck directly I, I know there is a way um, no you can't copy that directly but we can just look so we're gonna put in a night witch I think so we're gonna go deck um, the night was good we're gonna keep the night I think um, night witch we're definitely using we're gonna go for the bats and then for the inferno tower we're actually gonna go with a simple cannon to balance that out and the furnace was also super annoying and that can also be a good defensive card and we're gonna replace that with the musketeer so this is our new deck same elixir cost um just swapped around a couple different cards so we're gonna go here um and we're going against um uh, a C X X U or X U from the clan Warriors C D M X. Uh, he's gonna go with the split goblins in the back, so uh, R G in the back should be perfectly fine. Um, and there is a princess, so we're gonna wait to the last second and then drop our E Wiz just to get the most value possible. Um, and the princess only gets off one shot on the tower because you didn't know this probably, but if you drop the uh, E Wiz on the bridge, it will actually be able to get the princess's attention. If you drop it right there, Zap is just in range. And we'll be able to help you. Um, so we should be able to clear up that Dark Goblin pretty quickly. Come on, bats, pop out. Let's do it. Let's go. Um, there we go. We got a little bit of damage there. Um, but the Dark Goblin is also a very good choice for this deck. Cheap, reliable, um, and a very fast card, which automatically gets off two shots no matter what. So he has a, excuse me, it looks like a log bait deck of some sort. Um, but I think we should be fine towards that double elixir. He's going to just be dropping those princesses and dark goblins and goblin barrels. Um, but this furnace should be able to deal with most of that stuff just fine. Um, I'm going to save my Ewis for that. And I'm expecting he also has some other troops like Minion Horde, um, Skeleton Army. We're going to have to get the distraction. Ah, not fast enough, but those minions should clean it up pretty quickly. Um, and we should be perfectly fine. So if those minions are let go, that will go down. Um, I think the furnace is going to spawn right as they drop, so perfect. Look, they take him out instantly. I love when that happens, um, and the furnace is just super strong. So we're going to have to go take out that princess. You saw it caught its attention barely, and now he's going to have to defend that with something, or else, the oh, that Ewiz is going to get some nice damage onto that tower. And it looks like we're going to be switching towers with the most damage done. Um, it is going to be harder to attack that side, um, just because he's uh, some defensive cards like the knight and the tombstone, so I'm actually going to go towards the other side. Um, we should be perfectly fine. So knight in the back there. We're going to get ready with the zap spell. I guess not because those two fire spirits are going to do work for us over there. Um, so furnace should be plenty enough for sufficiency. And look at those two little goblins are going to go down. And now we have just a, a little bit left over for health wise on that tower. We're going to go get this cannon ready I think. We're just going to stick it splat right there. And now we're going to stick an RG right in the front there. Cannon should easily be able to take that out. And I have not seen an RG until now. Um, fairly surprising. I mean, 
Uh, the deck he's using is not the best. It doesn't have that defensive card that you need. Um, and hopefully that Night Witch will work on that and we'll be able to take it out. We're going to go uh, right there with the E-Wiz. And hopefully those two perfect take it out right there. Those two little fire spirits go jump onto that Goblin Barrel. And we get some extra damage. So he is going to log us. Um, I'm expecting an RG pretty soon. So as long as we get this World Giant down, the Princess will be distracted. Um, and wow, he has two Princesses now. Um, this is very, very peculiar. I've not really seen one of these strategies in the wild. Here comes a Goblin Barrel. We're going to go e was right on top of that. Boom, and it gets no damage, so we are going to be perfectly fine. Now we're going to stick a Furnace on defense right now like this, um, and then we're going to go stick minions of our own. So as long as we go Zap like this, uh, we should be able to take that out just fine. Um, and as you saw, that defensive Furnace placement was key. Um, it did not let him get that extra damage onto the tower. So now he has a Dark Goblin, so we're going to get ready with a Knight, so it cannot get to our tower. Um, and now we're going to go have to go with an Offensive RG after I am able to take out this uh, Goblin Barrel in the back here. So we're going to go with a Furnace, uh, just to play some defense against him. Um, and once again, we're just going to go stick some minions, and that should be sufficient. So now we actually are going to have to play a little bit of offense, no rush though. Um, He's going Dark Goblin on that left side, so now, we, I mean the right side, his left, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. That tower is not going to be the damage doer, so we're going to go boom, nice zap there. He is getting some good damage on that side though, so we're going to have to play some offense extremely quickly um, because that princess is starting to do some good work. So now we're going to go Electro Wizard, um, we're going to start sitting, uh, putting in all of our troops, and luckily, did you see that the RG does get that split second attack onto the tower, and we are able to win. Oh my goodness, we're not yet. We're not out of the water yet. Come on, let's go, RG. One more hit, and boom, there we go. We're going to clean that up for the third win of this video. So uh, we're doing really, really, really well. So hopefully I can be able to win the next just few battles because we are almost finished. We're over halfway there um, because we're already starting up that next battle. So now we're going, obviously, same deck. Uh, it worked pretty well. So we're going against Bob JMB Jr. from MLG Turtles. Uh, excuse me there. So sadly, we don't have the Furnace to start. I love that card. Uh, one of the most annoying cards and versatile cards in the game. Okay, so Knight also. So basically what I've seen, um, Knight is used a lot. Uh, and that's kind of it. I mean, everything else is, is, is different. Everyone has a different idea of what they're doing. I mean, here's a Witch and a Valkyrie. I've not seen those yet. Um, I like it. It's a diversity in the decks. Um, I mean, all of them have a Royal Giant, obviously. Um, aside from that, though, we got some nice difference, which is going to make the decks a little bit harder to create, a little bit harder to counter. Um, but you know the premise. I mean, uh, as long as you know that they're going to have one splash sheep, a little bit of air damage. Um, obviously, a defensive building is key, so they should have that. Um, and watch out for that Inferno Tower. So that is the advice I have for now. And we're going to play a cannon here to absorb that witch. Um, and now we do. The reason I played that is we have two buildings, so the furnace should be plenty, and we are going to be able to defend that royal giant just fine. Um, he has a wizard coming in, so we're going to go play a furnace in this defensive placement right, uh, obviously a little bit too early, which is a problem. Uh, that is not good because look, the, actually the RG was in range. We are perfectly fine. So the RG should go there um, and then we're going to take that out. Hopefully the knight will be able to help us save the Ewis. It does not, um, but check that out. It only gets off one shot on the tower. That's like 175 damage. Nothing to worry about there. Um, and I'm going to save my cannon for a little bit later. The knight should do enough damage that the witch will be able to go down to the tower without getting um, more than around 100 damage worth onto it because each shot does like 30. Um, so we are still perfectly fine. Now that I've uh, waved off that storm of a push, we're going to go a Royal Giant of our own in the back. You've noticed that not many people played up front at the bridge because it's easy to react to. Um, and they like to build up the pushes quicker. See, right there is at his tower, um, and that's usually what you're going to see. We're going to go build up a Night Witch of our own great defensive card. The longer you have it on the field, the more uh, defensive capabilities it gets because it spawns more and more bats. So now we're going to go Cannon here. It sadly does not lock on uh, to that, so we're going to go Zap it, which is going to go force it to lock on to the Cannon. Um, the Tornado was very well played. I'll say well played on that. Um, and now we're going to go Knight here, and then we're going to be able to use this Electro Wizard to be able to take out his Wizard because it has locked onto the Knight. Um, he's not actually gotten that much damage. We are technically in the lead so far. Um, always a good thing to be in the lead. And now we're going to go Cannon over here, and then we're going to stick a nice Zap for some good value. Um, and then we're going to go stick a Knight right on top of that Wizard. It is going to be taken out, but we have another e of our own, which should protect that Knight long enough, and we should be able to get some good damage. Nice. That's one shot from the e -wiz. That's two shots from the e -wiz. That is three shots, uh, like two, I guess one and a half because of the half shots I got. Um, 
Aside from that, though, we, we are doing pretty well. We're going to go zap that side over there. Um, we're going to go stick a knight in. The knight, which should do some good damage. And now we're going to go an E-Wiz right on top just to make sure it doesn't get a lot of damage. And look at that. The gang did more than anything else there. Um, I should have, I guess, taken it a little bit more seriously. The zap wasn't enough. Um, and he is definitely keeping the pressure on us. So Furnace should be able to quell that a little bit. I should have put it on the other side for some chip. Um, but I guess I didn't. So now we're going to have to go a, a Night Witch there. And a cannon. Can we get it down in time? Yes, we can. Perfect. And then we're just going to zap all that stuff. Um, minions should be good enough. And that RG is going to go down extremely quickly. Um, we're just going to go quick e -whiz there. I don't want too much damage getting on it. Um, and he it's pretty 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 balanced game. I mean, look at that equal damage on the towers. Um, wizard coming down the left and a knight coming down the right. So we're going to go take that out first. And then we're going to go stick a knight witch in the middle there. Um, and hopefully we can get a second furnace down. It does not look like anyone's going to win this game yet, but there's still two minutes left in this battle. And I do not think I'll be able to continue this. I might have to make a second part or something or just skip to the last battle because um, this battle is a little bit longer. And look at that. He sucked my RG a little bit in. That's interesting. We're going to go zap these minions. Um, and now this is looking very good. We're going to go Electro Wizard and Knight. And look at this. We're going to be able to cycle to another RG. Um, Come on, get in there, RG, get in there. Nice. Now we got a second one going in there with some support. Um, we're going to hopefully get these minis as fast as possible. We're going to go zap everything. This is our chance to be able to take that win. He does have a tornado, but that is fine. We're going to throw in another E-Wiz um, just to get as much damage as possible. And everything's pushing the RG closer and closer to the tower. Um, and we got some really, really good damage on that push. But the push isn't over yet. He's still on his heels. We're going to put another RG down. It does not look like he is a building accessible, uh, which means we can keep the pressure on him as much as possible. So we're going to stick a Night Witch in there, get some good damage. Um, and I think we're in the time where we can actually zap the tower down. Can we? That is going to be uh, 64 damage. No, we cannot. So we're going to be forced to play Cannon in the corner. We're going to be forced to play a Zap. The only thing we have to do is not mess this up. We just have to put one RG down, and that will be game. Uh, it doesn't even matter what he puts on the screen anymore. I mean, he doesn't have a tower, um, which is why you always should carry a tower. I mean, check this out. Even if it gets pummeled by literally every troop in the game, one shot, that's enough. It does over 100 damage, so there you go. That is going to be win number four out of six. Um, almost there. Uh, just two more to go. So I guess I shouldn't cut it because we are already at the second uh, to last tier of wins. So 100 RGs that I'm never going to use in the future. Um, not kidding about that. It's, it's pretty bad. Unless it gets a buff, I doubt I'm going to use it. It also is just super annoying to deal with. I, I mean, I have nothing against it. It's just extremely annoying. Uh, I, don't, I don't dislike people who use it. I just think... Um, oh, it's just, it's just, I don't like the card itself. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I mean, when I, that was counter contradicting, I don't just like people who use it. Uh, I get why they use it, uh, just because it's annoying, but the game mechanics are just kind of a little bit different than usual. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Uh, we're going to have to deal with this graveyard push and the RG. So this knight, uh, should be able to help clean that up a little bit. Um, e -Wiz does not stay alive, which isn't the best. Um, and he spent a huge amount of elixir on that push though, which means we were able to get a little bit of chip with the Night Witch on the, uh, right side there. So we now know we have to save those minions on defense. With minions, we're going to be perfectly okay. I didn't see he had any fireball and maybe he had a zap. Um, but to my knowledge, he probably doesn't have a tornado or arrows. No one really uses that too much, even though they are very, very strong cards. Um, I mean, we're not that far behind. It's around 1,000 damage. That is probably one good RG push can get at least 1,000 damage onto a tower. Uh, Night Witch in the back, and then we're going to play a Furnace as support. We're just going to wait. We're going to just hold it here, um, and now we're going to go Furnace just to save up a little bit. So that's his killer card um, is that mini P.E.K.K.A. there, so we have to worry about that a little bit later. Luckily, those Fire Spirits get some nice value onto that tower, um, and then we're going to get a Cannon. Just sit it down right there, and look at those bats, by the way. Super good. That's why the Night Witch was a good pick. Um, and we are able to take up that RG without getting any damage onto the tower. So now he knows. I'm not sure why exactly he went for the right side, his left, my right. Um, because look at that. Our left side has a lot less damage. Um, I mean, a lot more damage taken. So I'm, I'm wondering why he did that. Uh, now we're going to... Here comes a graveyard, 100%. So we're going to get ready with the minions. Um, and now we're going to get ready with the knight. Which, see, that's good. The prediction there is going to save us a ton of damage. If you put him down a little bit late, even a second or two, you're going to lose probably 100 damage on that tower, which is going to be key. Because that's the difference between um, able to fireball it down and able to have to rocket it down. And check out that knight there. We're coming back with some good damage. Um, 
And check that out, those minions connect with the tower, and I told you, look at that, we're already within 200 damage. Uh, his lead has been cut down entirely down to just under 200 damage, which is perfect. Um, now we're going to get ready with all of our defensive troops, and we're going to set in another RG in the back. Not the front, because he has all that defensive stuff there, um, such as the tombstone and the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the archers, which actually do a ton of damage build up over time. Uh, so we're just going to have to settle with a small one. So I do not understand why he keeps going for the side with all of my defensive troops on it. That's what would have happened to me so there goes the poison spell um but that really isn't going to do much because i still have the night witch in there i still have all the bats going um and we're just gonna have to chip them slowly down um back and forth back and forth we're gonna stick another furnace there um and i mean there still is a lot more damage on that left side than the right uh for him so i'm just kind of confused about why he's only going for that one side of mine um Hopefully these can connect, so we're going to go minions, now we're going to go boom and zap all of them down like this. He's saving up for a poison, there it goes, um, and we're going to have to stick a knight there just for some extra support. Um, and I know here comes a mini P.E.K.K.A., so a knight which uh, in there should be able to help with that. Um, and then we're going to stick some minions. I really should save them for off I mean defense, but I really need them at the moment for the offense. Uh, luckily, we are able to take out that mini P.E.K.K.A. fairly quickly, which means we can stick another RG down right away. Um, and now we're going to be able to stick down a defense or offensive slash defensive cannon. Um, it's going to be kind of an in interesting placement, uh, but it will be able to be able, uh, will be able to finish off this game. Uh, look at that, that offensive cannon placement. I love it. Uh, new strategy in the game. Go to check that. Write that in the books there in the history. You're going to start seeing cannons placed at the bridge um, to be able to help take out the towers. Uh, now that's an interesting one. No, actually, don't do that. That'd be horrible. Um, but anyway, uh, one more battle, and that is going to wrap this up. So here we go, getting into the final one. Maybe six and one. This challenge isn't too hard. Um, I mean, it's obvious what they're gonna play. It's very limited deck selection. Um, but based off that limited selection, everyone has used up every last slot uh, for different cards. Um, I'd say 90% of them have a knight. Um, bowler, first time I've seen a bowler. I was actually thinking about using one, um, but it's not really going to help because I'm not using a... Not many people are going to be using the Skarmy, um, and minions are going to be used all the time. And here comes an RG, so we're going to go get ready for that with the minions. Um, here comes a Night Witch, so we're going to go Night Witch. And check out those minions shred. Um, and they actually, well, they aren't shredding anymore, uh, but they were. So he's forced to arrow, and now that Knight will be able to take out the rest of them. And we got some nice, nice 700 uh, solid damage onto his tower. Um, that last bat almost connects with it, and now he is forced to play that defensive RG which is going to take a lot of damage from that knight, which is going to enable us to place that cannon with plenty of time, and he is going to lose elixir because he had to defend the knight. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, that's interesting. So now we're going to go E-Wiz. Hopefully the cannon will stay alive. It doesn't, and that E-Wiz stares at the balloon for a second, wondering, should I shoot it or not? Um... Eventually goes down, but that bomb damage is going to hurt a lot. Oh, I can feel that one from here. I'm um, going to check that out. He let the e -wiz go, so now I guess we're going to go for that left side because we got even more damage on it. Um, always go for the side with uh, less health on it. I mean, that's quite obvious, but sometimes people don't. It's very, very intriguing um, how many times uh, people have lost because, oh, they split up their damage on the towers. I've done that before, but that's accidental because, you know, your, your leftover cards from the pushes get damaged. But you really, really should try not to split your pushes up unless there's a reason to. If there's a reason like, oh, he spent all of his elixir on that one side, then go for the other. Um, but unless it's a special scenario, don't just go putting your troops on random parts of the map. You really do need to care about where you place them. Uh, defensive knight should be perfectly uh, suitable for the situation. Um, and now we're just going to go the quick e was on top because those bats would have done some nice damage. Uh, well, bad damage, but a lot of it. Um, so now we're able to build up a counter push because those bats were taken out fairly quickly. Um, we're also going to stick a knight so those little bats are going to fly over. And that knight, as you can tell, barely is actually tanking for that RG. Um, we're going to go with a cannon here just to limit that one extra shot of damage. I don't need that damage getting here. I can limit it, so why not? He just uses arrows, so that is an option to place those minis in a defensive way. Um, and now we can easily go e -wiz to take out the balloon. If you didn't know yet, e -wiz is take out balloons just fine, um, even if they get zapped. So now we're going to have to worry about that Night Witch, uh, but that is what this knight is for. And look at that, by the way, the RG is going to take it out on that left side, so it looks like we are going to be cruising in on the last 20 seconds of this video. So maybe we can get that that second tower who knows we're gonna go furnace uh i guess we're just gonna go with a quick cannon on that side you don't want to blow the game in the last nine seconds um i was thinking about using a balloon but you notice his deck has bowler is five rg is six 
and the balloon is five. So that is a ton of extra elixir uh, that you don't need in the deck. Just a cycle one is perfectly fine. I'll say thumbs up, good luck, and well played to you. And we're going to receive the final batch of 150 Royal Giants. Um, what an amazing uh, challenge. I, th I found that fun. I, I mean, I never use it, so it's great to use it. Um, and there we go, 150 RGs into our collection. And now we're going to go open up this chest. 600 gold, two furnace, 22 e-barbs, and we're going to get an Alepic. An Alepic, that's not a card. An Epic Witch. Um, who knows? I mean, witches sometimes aren't epic. Um, and that is going to wrap up this video. So I really do hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, please tell me in the comments down below. That's going to be all. And I'll see you all in the next video.